everyone. Uh, recently purchased a Bergen, um, which is basically another name for a large rucksack or backpack. It's what the British Army call them. Um, I've got a 65 litre Alisac, but I found that the stuff I want to take um, doesn't fit in the bag that well. Um, and I'm having to put like a sleeping bag in the tent and quite a lot of stuff on the outside as opposed to the inside, um, which I wasn't really happy with. Um, more so just, you know, it rains, we've got to wrap everything up in plastic and dry bags, etc. So I thought to myself, well, you know, the British Army must know what they're talking about, they must know what they're doing. You know, the best army in the world. So if they're using a bag like this, then it's got to be a good bag. And it came yesterday morning, um, and I'd, I'd watched quite a few videos on YouTube of different reviews. And to be honest, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, just the, versatile, the versatility it's got. Um, and the, all the different attachments it's got. And to me, it's very, very well designed. The way it's been thought out, the modifying it and altering it, you know, making the bag smaller, making it bigger, adding attachments. I just think it's the perfect bag for hiking, camping. Yeah, so okay, there's probably going to be people saying it's the bag so much heavier than a, a different bag, a, a normal backpack, what you would get from a hiking shop. But I don't think it'd be that much more. And I think because of the quality and the versatility, I don't think there's a bag comes near it for the money. Um, you know, like when you're looking at big brands of walking or hiking equipment, like Berghaus and Osprey and things like that, I think it's mental how much you can pay for a big, good bag. Um, so anyway, it's my choice. Everyone's got their opinions and everyone's got their favourite brands and whatever. I get that. That's how all these companies exist. But I bought this and I haven't been out with it yet, but I'm absolutely over the moon with it what I've looked at and the options I've got with changing the shape and size of it. So basically what I've put on is I've put what I believe to be what I would need to go camping for 24 hours say. Um, it is heavy, I'm not going to lie to you, at a guess I haven't weighed it, um, I haven't got any scales. But I guess I would probably say it's around about 20 kilograms. Um, so yeah, it's heavy, I'm not going to lie. But I don't see what else I could really not take unless I'm really going, you know, very minimalistic. But I want to go and have me comfort, you know, and have a good night's sleep and enjoy the experience. Um, I, I do get there's guys on here that go wild camping for two or three days and you know they take five ten kilograms and it's very lightweight I get I get that that's that's what they like to do and that's good for them you know they, they buy super light super lightweight materials or they'll just take very minimalistic um but again that's up to them um, I like the bigger bag and I like to take a little bit more. Um, one of the things obviously is the tent. Now I understand obviously if I took a tarp and a bivy and a hammock it would be a lot lighter but I don't know maybe I'll look at that in the future but for now I've got a tent. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what I would take camping and then I would love some comments off you guys to say, you know, you shouldn't be taking that or you don't need that or why don't you change that for another one? Because I'm, I'm quite new to this. I've, I have done a lot of hiking and walking, but I haven't done much camp. Well, 
camping when I was a kid, but I haven't done much camping where you know you're actually carrying it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go through this the contents of the bag and then we'll look at the actual bag itself um, and I'll discuss what ideas I've got for the future to do with the bag, a couple of products I'm looking at. So um, right, let's get started. So it's a British Army Infantry Bergen, I think that's right, or well, that's what I've bought anyway. Um, it's a hundred litre capacity and you can add more pouches or rockets or pockets, loads of different names on, to the actual bag which will up its capacity. You can also make the bag smaller but I'll go through that as we empty the bag so you can see how versatile it is. Um, so firstly, on the front I've just attached my walking pole the front of here. It's got a little ribbon on and a strap on the bottom where the walking pole goes in. So that is my walking pole. Doesn't weigh very much so that's not really an issue. Little front pouch. Again you can set these burgers up however you want but I've got that in here. My little cook stove set. So basically that's all I need to cook for a couple of days. And um, there is a gas canister in there, a uh, fork. I could probably, I don't know, maybe take another gas canister. But anyway, I've got one in there for now as you can hear. So I'll put that there. So that's the front bag. So basically fits the stove. You won't get much more with. But that's cool. Right, on this side, if I undo these straps. I have a tent. This is an All Pro Pioneer 2. It's two man, so what that means in normal terms is one man and he's Bergen and he's dog in my case. Um, I looked for this online. Again, I was I'm quite new to this, so it, people are going to have different points about what tents are best or what tents are like this or what tents are the best for the money. So I seen this and it got really good reviews. It's made by All Pro. It seems to be very well made when I've seen the reviews. It's 1.9 kilograms packed. Okay. It's got ripstop fabric and it's got a 5,000 rating for waterproofing. So looking at other tents I think that's really good Um, I have put a lot of videos on when it's in my garden erected it's got aluminium poles and aluminium pegs that are in this bag so again it's quite light for a tent I know there are lighter ones but this I got for £67 from the All Pro website and for that you know that's amazing I think because I was willing to pay double really for my first tent um, but yeah, now other options I've thought about since attaching it to the Bergen there's different places I could put it I could put it on the bottom, on the side, in the middle, on the top I could also take the poles out and put the poles in the bag which would make this softer and easier to pack the reason why I just put it on the side for now was just to try it just to see if it would actually fit there and what it would be like now the only problem is when you put it on the, the side of the bag, it makes the bag a bit unbalanced. But what I'm thinking of is, is possibly getting a camel's back water pouch to go on the side of here, which you can get and they're passing on. It's the, the only ones made for this bag. So I'm thinking, you know, put a litre or two of water in there, it might balance it out, so I'm going to give that a try. If and if I do get a camel back, I'm going to give it a try and see how the bag balances out then. But the tent will fit to the side of there, no problem. Um, I've also got the option of getting a side pocket, which holds 10 litres. So each pocket would hold 10 litres of kit. So I'm also thinking of possibly getting a side pocket 
and then taking the poles out here and putting the tent in the pocket just so it's inside the bag so it's more secure and you know it probably looks less conspicuous when I'm walking around because you know if you're wild camping and you've got a tent strap in your bag it's pretty obvious what you intend to do I think but again I'll probably do another video if and when I get them bits of kit so it's either two pockets or a pocket and a camel back but I'll show you them if and when I get them so that's the tent um, so that's the front pocket and the sides pocket so starting from the top and we'll work our way down the top pocket we've got a side zip as well as well sorry on the top you've got loads of places to anchor and tie stuff to now I wouldn't recommend lifting the bag with the handle because that's more for a fastening point that's the actual grab handle you'd use for the bag so you know you grab it by that now that is really strong now I've been told um, on looking on YouTube with different reviews that this handle is that strong it's actually designed for if you imagine in warfare if someone had been shot or was injured and they were lying on the ground with the Bergen on full of gear another soldier could actually grab that and drag the person to safety so you know you think I don't know 100 k of body and 20 or 30 k of weight so that's that's tough enough to pull that I don't know how true it is but that's that's the theory behind it um, so grabbing it by that you're not going to have any problems so a side pocket so what I've put in here just to try the bag out is let's have a look uh, little collapsible dog bowl the, you know, my pooch is going to need for fed and water. I've got my little knife for cooking and crafting. I have got first aid kit. In here, I've got painkillers, matches, and a couple of foil blankets. Plaster plus plasters, a couple of little candles um, to help with maybe fire lighting. I don't know. I just had them in the drawer, so I thought why not put them in there? I've also got my rain slash sun hat, which is really nice, it's made from Gore-Tex, so it's waterproof and obviously keeps the sun off your head and your shoulders. This as well, it's a Green Man Bushcraft little fire starting kit. So you've got your flint and steel in there and your, your fabric for setting the fire. I've only used it once, but I just got it for a little bit of fun, really, just to see if I could actually start a fire without matches or a lighter. So I've got that in there. And I've also got just some paracord, orange and black. Just, you know, if I need to tie anything extra to the bag or when I set up my camp, I need paracord for any reason, spare shoe lace or, you know, a washing line or something to dry some clothes off. Just anything like that. But what it is, I just think it's very practical to carry some of that in the bag. So that, I think, yep, that's that bit empty. You, you get more stuff in there, so there's plenty of space. So if I open the lid, inside the lid, there's another zip inside the hood. And in here, it's not it's not as big. I've got my OS Explorer map. I've got my compass. I've also got a compass on my watch. Um, but for what that is, what it costs and the weight of it, you know, why not pack one of them? I've also got a torch. I'll put a little Caribbean clip on it when I'm in the tent. 
and attach at the top and it's you know where it is if you need it in an emergency so yeah that's there as well I've got a little head torch I got from Mountain Warehouse cheap and cheerful really light again I can wear that when I've got any camp or I'm walking in the dark maybe so it's, it's another alternative anyway again very light very small so I, I can't see the problem of taking that <coughs> got these off eBay some earplugs because I have found when you're camping you know next to a river or birds in the morning next I mean, when I've been camping the garden put them in get a bit extra a few hours extra sleep so also one of them blindfold things you get when you're traveling sometimes I wear that because if it's very light in the morning you know you might wake up at four o'clock in the morning uh, brilliant daylight outside put that on it might mean you sleep till about six seven o'clock instead a couple, you know get a couple hours sleep stick to there again super light doesn't take up any room so uh, and that's that You could you could get more in there, but I'm just thinking put that stuff in there, and then you know I'll trial and error it when I when I go camping. I might put other stuff in different pockets, but we'll see. Right now for the big bag. So you've got this cover with this little fast toggle. Dead easy. Put it on. Just lift it up. Zoom. Great big. Look at that, comes out, look at that, See, you know, it really extends to get you a lot more kit. Now, that is quite heavy, um, it's the dog's blanket basically. I'm going to look, I'll probably come up with another solution for that, because I want him to be comfy and to lie on something comfortable in the tent, because so that way he's going to settle. But, it is heavy, um, so... I'm going to look at doing an alternative, maybe something else that he would find comfortable. So that's that for now. Um, I've just got a carrier bag here with some items in. Just, just put in some mug shots. Just a little cooking. I would, you know, I would take more food. I would probably get like a dehydrated meal. Sorry, I'll... When that's finished, I would probably get a dehydrated meal, something a bit nicer and fancier for my evening meal. Just again, a bit of comfort food, really, you know. Um, but they're just in there, just you know, if I'm peckish on the way around, and I can have them or a cup of tea or a coffee, something like that. Um, I've also got in my bag, I just decided to put them in the bigger bag, just you know, thinking if they get waterproof. I've got my battery banks. Um, this one will charge my Samsung probably about 25%. This one is a lot bigger. Um, I think it's a 10,000 ohm or amp. Um, got it off eBay. It's, it's meant to charge your phone four times over, but I've never actually tried it for that. So. But it's it, at the end of the day between them two, I'll have more than enough power for 24 hours. But they're in there anyway. But again, they're a little bit heavy. So, you know, I might find that if I'm only going 24 hours, my phone battery will actually last. So I'll just leave them out for now. Right, what else we got? Um, I pack me down jacket. Obviously, I might be wearing this if I'm out with the bag, if the weather's that bad. But I'm just presuming that it'll go in the bag. This is more for sort of, you know, of a night time when I'm in camp, the, the temperature drops. I can wear that, again, be comfortable. I, I love this jacket, it's really comfy. Um, and it is warm, waterproof. So I, it's something I think I should take. Um, it's just from Mountain Warehouse. And I've had it a few years now, and it's, uh, it's lasted really well. Um, little 
another travel pillow. Or, well, probably not that little, but it's light, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm taking that with us again, just extra added comfort. Now, originally, I did toy with the idea of just, for instance, using my sleeping bag bag or my tent bag, just stuffing my clothes and my coat inside and using that as a pillow. I might look at that option because, you know, it's one less thing to take, but it's very light um, and it is comfy. So something else I could do without with though, if I need to do. Um, what I've packed in here is just some spare clothes. Um, I, now, obviously when I'm out camping or walking, I'll probably have my sort of hiking pants on. And I've just packed a tracksuit and a long sleeve tracksuit top. Now my theory behind this is it could double up as a sleep system if I was cold. So I could wear it as a sort of set of thermals. And if for something happened to the, my, my hiking gear, I got wet or whatever, and it was a catastrophe, I could wear this the next day to get back to the car. Um, so I'd be dry. So that's, that's me sort of thought process behind that. So it would double up as two options. Right, then I've got me pack of waterproof pants and jacket. Um, I would definitely take the pants. I was thinking of leaving the jacket out because I have got my, um, my Mountain My House coat. But to be honest, I thought, well, for the weight of it, it's just something handy to have. I have wore these in quite bad weather before when it's been really, really chucking it down and they were really good. They were quite, you know, really waterproof, kept us dry. Um, they were from Go Outdoors and it's £20. So I only got the, the two in the bag. So yeah, recommend them. Like I said, I know, you know, they're all better waterproofs out there, but they're all a lot more expensive waterproofs out there. And I think just, you know, putting them on in a shower, £20, happy days. My Mountain Warehouse Inflatable Mat. Um, this is really, really good. I think it's recommended price on there is £60. No, never going to pay £60 for one of these. I think I paid about 20 by the time I got it in the sale and it's 20% off discount. Um, emails and what have you so it, it came in about £20 but I tell you what for £20 it's a crack and mat really really good self inflating but you still do have to blow up a little bit more but I've slept on it a couple of times now and it's really really comfortable so I really really like it Um, you know you could get spend more money and get ones that compress more I get that maybe you're a little bit lighter Um. But again, I just thought, you know, this will do for now. If I get out and I enjoy wild camping and I'll do it repetitively, then I might look at improving my kit. But I'm not going to go out and spend a fortune on something that I might do once or twice and think, actually, it's not for me. So anyway, that's what I got. Um, it's actually three centimeters thick, 51 centimeters wide. 180 centimeters long which is about five foot ten which is what i am so yeah plenty of room comes with um little pack repair kit and what have you so yeah that's that what else we've got hat and gloves for the space and the size and the weight of them i think that's a valuable asset to have you know get cold and you haven't got hat and gloves, you're going to prove you had them. So, yeah, take them with us. Because you never know, especially if you're going up the higher ground, the weather can change quite quickly. It is Britain, after all. One day is a heat wave, the next day is a flood. So, yeah, there and there as well. What else we've got? We're getting deep now. Um, that there, just a bag. Inside the bag, I've got my wind cheetah, the Burgos wind cheetah coat. Um, again, 
I've just put that in there just to see if it would go in. Put like all my kit in. So that sort of means I've got a Berg House wind cheater. It's not waterproof, but it's really great in the wind. I've also got my waterproof jacket and I've also got my down jacket. So you're probably thinking, how many jackets do you need? And you're probably right. Um, I would, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe leave this at home. But it's just, just to see, sort of, if I put everything in, would it fit and would I still have room? So, but that's probably one of the first things that would come out of the bag and be left. This, great little product, not mouse again, little microfiber towel, really good. Um, I think I got it three pound or something like that. Like pennies, really. I think the posters probably cost more than the product. Um, really good. It dries really quick. It's just handy. Um, I thought, you know, if the dog's been out and he's wet, got it for him, really. So I can dry him off before he gets in the tent. Um, going to make himself more comfortable and plus the fact going to make the tent a lot nicer smell wise and dryness. Don't want a wet dog in the tent. Got two little fasteners there for hanging up or fastening to your bag. Pull cord um, and a mesh bag to help it dry off. So green, dead light. Okay, it's, it's just, you know, got some inches to it. So now that's something else that's taking up space, but it's very light and I think very handy if you need it. And then I think we're getting to the end now. This is this is the big boy. This is yep, that's the bottom of the bag. Right, this is my new sleeping bag, Berg House. Transition 200. I've used it twice now. Fantastic. Love it. Very comfy. Um, keeps us warm. Just lovely to lie in. It's got the hood. It's also got pull cords to tighten it around your sort of shoulders. Um, it's got the zip that goes all the way down the bottom. So I'm over the moon with it. Um, you know, I do like the brand Burkhaus. I think it is a good brand. The only thing is obviously it's a big size. Now I paid about £30 for this in the game. I know there are sleeping bags out there that are compressed to a lot smaller than this and probably way less. But I I did have a mummy bag and I found it quite tight and you know I've got quite wide shoulders and I was sort of you know a bit claustrophobic. So I went for the bigger, wider bag. And it's it's really nice, and again, I feel more comfortable lying in it. So there's something else, you know, you'll probably have your opinions of the bag being too big or too heavy. Um, but I just thought, you know, if that's if this is the sort of kit I want to take, then this is the sort of bag I'm gonna have to take it in, and I'm gonna have to accept the weight, really. So that's that. Now, so that is my kit obviously on top of that i would take toiletries and um, a few more bits of food dog food water um, i'm looking at different options at the camelback or the side of the bag because if i carry the water and i think it's it holds three liters that's more than enough water i probably wouldn't take that much well i wouldn't take that much um, but again, it's extra weight and water is quite heavy. You don't really realise that until you've got to carry it. So I'm looking at op the option of maybe a, a water filter. I can also boil my water if I find a stream. So it's all sort of things I'm learning and picking up on. So firstly then, the bag. Um, this is the British Army Infantry Bergen. As I say, for some reason the Army call them Bergens and everyone else calls them backpacks or rucksacks, but that's that's all right. But if you hear people say, I've got a Bergen, a Bergen basically is a big rucksack. Right, so we'll talk through it. So I've showed you the pockets. So on the top, you've got multiple fixing points all over the place, right? There's the front, again, multiple fixing points. Your little pocket at the front, which is perfect for your cool kit. You've got 
lots of grip on the straps so you know if you wanted to say put something across there like the sleeping bag or the tent you've got lots of space to really do that so you're going to get loads attached to the front of there now what some people do is they find out what works for them and then they just tape up the loose bits to keep them nice and safe and secure and neat. So again, I might do that. Now, the side bag, the side of the bag, I should say, sorry, where you can get various pieces of kit that will attach onto, you've got the buckles, and you've got your straps. So the camelback, if you get the Bergen one, it'll clip on, fasten on, and basically look as though it's part of the bag. The same as the side rockets, or the side pocket rockets, there's, there's a few different nicknames. But basically you can get two great big bags that go on the side. And what they do is, they fasten on the zips, and also the straps, so they're very, very secure. If I do get any, I'll do another review of putting them on. But what you can also do, which I was, I was really impressed by, you can all, if you, if for instance, if oh, I've got this great big bag and I'm not going to carry it, what you can do, I'm not going to carry a great big huge bag around with this when it's got hardly any kit in. If you get the zip, bear with it. Zip the two zips together. And that will make the bag a lot smaller. So I won't zip that one, because you can see how it works. But again, that really narrows the bag, makes it a much smaller bag if you were taking this kit, which I think is a cracking little idea. Um, you know, if if you set your tent and that up in your sleeping bag and you're off for a day hike, you can adjust the bag so it looks, it looks a lot smaller and neater. Just for the sake of that, I just, I just think that's a great touch that they've done on these bags. Just well fold off. So yeah, so it's got straps all over the shop. Straps on the bottom. You know, buckles. So there's loads, like when you look, there's loads of different bits and bobs you can buy for these burgers that attach. Um, you can also get, and that's the sort of harness that goes over your, your chest and your shoulders, and you can detach the two side pockets, or one, to take off the bag, and you can attach them to the yoke. So, like a little haversack, if you like. Um, have a look on YouTube. It's, it's, I was amazed when I started looking at these reviews for these bags, and all the different ways you can have setups. I, I think they're cracking me, I do. Really, really good. Um, so, the back, you've got your padded back. It's not, not very padded, but when I've had all my kit in there and I've just had a bit of practice walking around the house, it does feel comfortable. It, you know, a lot of people see all the, the straps aren't that good. I haven't noticed any difference, to be honest. Like, I've got a, a 30 litre burg house in a 65 litre jelly and I wouldn't say these are any more comfortable especially considering how much weight I've got in but that's you know that's me other people might disagree you've got your two side straps with your belly buckle and what I've done I've just modified one of my old bags to borrowed the chest strap off it and just attached it to there just to pull it in wear it a bit more comfortably now the only other thing that I haven't mentioned is on the inside of the bag there's a pocket on the back you can see that there if we open this up there's like a rib if you like which looks like that so that's the frame of the bag take that out that'll go in the washing machine, wash, so if it's dirty, 
Get that out, wash it. Perfect. That's aluminium, so it's light. Um, and you know, it's always used as a weapon. Not that I would uh, want to hit anything with it, but you know, it's there for me to So that just slots back in the bag. And you just fasten the press stud. Like so. So there you go. So I'm just going to show you now what it looks like and from an aerial view. So just while I've done this video, I would probably say possibly ditch the storm proof coat, the bird house, because I've still got two jackets. Um, and the dog blanket, I need to come up probably with a better solution to that because that is quite a size blanket and it's quite heavy. So I'll say maybe maybe the towel, the microfiber towel, maybe that'll do. And you'll lie on that. Um, but obviously at the end of the day, I want you know, I love my dog and I want him to be comfortable. So I might I might cut the blank blanket off. I'll have a look. It's, it's all about learning as you go. So right, I'll just grab the camera. So there you can see. The blanket, my down jacket, the Bergen, power bank, map, fire starter kit, the dog bowl, the compass, first aid kit, torch, self inflating, self inflating pillow, in fact, me sun hat, me walking pole, me cook stove, me pioneer, all pro. To tent, my windproof coat, my food bag, spare clothes, micro towel, waterproofs, self inflating mattress, my sleeping bag, my hats and my gloves. So there you go, that's what I think I need to camp out for 24 hours. So please let us know. If you think I'm wrong and I'm taking too much, or you've got any ideas, I can uh, change what I take. But all that in the bag, I would say it's about 20 kilograms, plus the fact I need to put some toiletries and that in. So I wouldn't walk that far, I don't think, probably three or four miles of my camp and set up. But I think with all that there, you know, I would be comfortable, have a good night's sleep, and I've got you know, my first aid kit for safety, things like that. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please send us a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And uh, if I do get any more attachments for the Bergen, I'll be in touch. Thanks for watching. Bye now.